Hey there everyone, my name is Chelsea. Welcome to Little Mountain Ranch, welcome to my garden. I'm really happy to have you here with me today where we have a bunch of work to do in the garden. And then what I thought we would do once we're finished all the work we need to get done is pick a bunch of produce from the garden, bring it up to the kitchen and turn it into a beautiful soup for dinner. I don't know if I ever told you guys the story of my first ever a vegetable box that I bought from a farm back when I was probably in my late teens, early 20s, something like that. And I was so excited to have all this amazing fresh produce and I brought the box home and I opened it up on my counter. I can't remember exactly what was in the box um, and now because this was many, many years ago, but I remember the feeling of looking at the box of produce and just really having no idea what to do with it. I, it was probably things like beets and Swiss chard and kale and leeks and things like that. And so I thought it might be fun to just go through my garden, pick a bunch of produce, and then just turn that produce into something that you could make in your own kitchen. So we're gonna do that, but before we get to that, we have some cleaning out in the garden to do. So we're at that time of year where things are being killed off by frost. You can see all my pickling cucumbers along here. I have some other things, some beautiful flowers and things in this row as well, but the pickling cucumbers have definitely seen better days. So that needs to get cleaned out. Over here where we took the broccoli out, when was that, a couple of days ago, the bed has now been cleaned out and just about ready for winter. All I have to do now is cut the sides of the bed in just so that it's nice and tidy again and top it with, with some fresh um, composted manure. And that's what I use primarily in my garden to feed the soil. And then it'll be to bed until spring when I can um, just plant right in it, which is so nice. Last year was the first year that I ever really prepped my garden well. Usually by the end of the gardening season, I'm kind of done <laughs> with the garden and I just abandon it until the spring and then do all that work of prepping all the beds in the spring. But I cannot tell you how nice it was last year to be able to come out in the springtime and have my garden pretty much ready to just plant right in. So my goal is to do that this year. So as we're pulling things out of the garden, I'm trying to clean the beds up as we go. I'm happy to say that we haven't had any frost since the frost that we had a couple days ago. So all the squash that are in this patch are still growing, which is fantastic. I can't wait to get in there and harvest all those in a few weeks. We did eat corn on the cob the other day, all the corn that I picked off my tiny little patch here, and it was delicious, I'm happy to say. As far as what we have left to harvest in the garden, there's still a ton of food left in here to put up, but most of it can stay for the next couple of weeks uh, because it's mostly root crops until I have a lot of the other things out of here and have some of this other stuff cleaned up and then I'll be able to get in and pull all that stuff out and I'll definitely bring you along with me for that. Those harvests are always fun because they're gigantic, like hundreds and hundreds of carrots or thousands of potatoes, so much fun. But let's get into this situation here. I brought my after nap tea <laughs> down with me to the garden. Normally I'll drink it in the house, but it was just too beautiful to stay inside. If you're new here, I am a big, advocate of the afternoon power nap. It is the way that I can do as much as I can do in a day. I'm a morning person, so I have most of my energy in the morning and I get most of my work done in the morning, but I really start to slow down after lunchtime. And if I just have a nap, usually around 20 minutes or so of actual sleeping, I do lay down for almost a full hour, but actually sleeping for 20 minutes, it gives me enough energy to keep going for the rest of the day and get lots more done. So after I have my nap, I always have a cup of tea. So today, tea time is happening out in the garden because it is still so beautiful out here and I want to just soak up every last minute of this gorgeous weather. I normally like to garden barehanded, as you know, but these vines can be a little prickly, so I'm gonna glove up today. And all of these beautiful pot marigolds or calendula, I'm gonna leave because they still look absolutely gorgeous. And then I'll be harvesting seeds. I'll show you what the seeds look like. This is what calendula seeds look like, just like that right there. So I will be harvesting a bunch of those because I just think they're so beautiful. And this right here, this is just, I think two plants right here. So they really do spread out like crazy. So with the calendula, this is what they look like when they start to form their seed. 
just like that. And then they'll dry out and turn brown when they're ready to harvest. Oh, I'm just not a fan of the feeling of gloves. Um, but we'll get in here and we'll just start ripping out all of these vines. And we still have some pickling cucumbers in here hanging on these vines. I don't know if you can see that, but these are just going to go right out to my compost pile and my cows and my horses will actually munch on these along with my chickens and my turkeys. I cannot believe I still have pickling cucumbers. <laughs> it's just incredible. Look at that. We have some cantaloupe in here. Because I lost so many to frost in June, it was something like 40, I actually had to plant, replant all those ones. So I was not thinking it was going to be a very good year, but it was the best cucumber year I've ever had. <laughs> just, just bizarre. So let's chat about this weed barrier here because I've had lots of questions about it. Um, I'll see if I can find it. I just bought this stuff off of Amazon. The reason that I have it in this bed and in this bed over here, and I think that's pretty much it um, besides the squash patch over in the back there, is because I had terrible invasive grass in this stuff, in, in here, in these two beds, and I just wanted to kill it. <laughs> so I put that stuff down, but I also didn't want to waste the space in my garden. So I planted in it, just cut holes in it and planted um, the pickling cucumbers and whatnot in it. And it did very well, I must say. It was very nice not to have all the grass. I have some concerns, I guess you could say, about the microplastics that will get into the soil from this. Um, it's supposed to be non-toxic, so it's not supposed to leach all kinds of chemicals into your soil, but there are the microplastics and I, I'm like, I just wish there was a better option. I've tried all the things. I've tried thick mulch. I've tried, cause we can do thick mulch here. We don't have big um, slug issues. <clears throat> I've tried just weeding it. <laughs> And this has definitely been the most effective way of choking out the quack grass. So I think what I will probably do is leave this, these two on. This is the second year I think I've had that one on this bed, uh, but leave these two on for another year. And hopefully I'll be able to take it off at that point and actually have all that invasive grass out of here. It looked a lot nicer once all the plants kind of grew up and started to cover it up a little bit. When it comes to pulling stuff out of your garden, um, keep in mind that if you have any weeds in your garden and you've let them go to seed, that if you put those into your compost, you are likely going to end up with those weed seeds reinfesting your garden in the, the following year. So keep that in mind. Also, if you have any diseased plant material, you don't want to put that in your compost either. One year I had powdery mildew, pretty bad powdery mildew, and I combated it with a mixture. If I remember correctly, it was milk and water and a little bit of dish soap maybe something like that anyway and I was able to get on top of it but we live in a very dry climate here so we don't usually have issues with powdery mildew in the garden thank goodness I have to do something with these strawberries I had started these strawberries from seed oh look at that there's some strawberries on there um, from seed back in February I think and it was the first time I'd ever done that and they just did not do very well in the early spring so I just stuck them into pots and they certainly did better after I did that. This is quite satisfying. <laughs> this mallow, oh my gosh, this stuff here is called mallow and it is everywhere in my garden. Okay, we got a few flowers down on this end, some painted daisies and some more calendula. So we'll leave that there because that looks beautiful. We have one very sad looking butternut squash vine here with some little tiny plants on there. 
So I guess we'll leave that one. <laughs> so these ones were the cue ball squash. I'm not going to be planting these ones again. They weren't bad. Um, they're just basically like a hybrid zucchini and you're supposed to harvest them when they're really small. These are fully mature so I could get seeds out of there if I wanted to, but these are just going to get pulled out and give or given to the chickens. They love them, but they just weren't my favorite. I just prefer regular zucchini compared to these. We still have the zucchini plants growing here, <clears throat> but they don't have any zucchini on them, so we'll rip those out too. I am already planning next year's garden though, and I'm excited about it. This was, I think, potentially my best garden year that I have ever had. And with gardening, you get to take some of the credit for how well your garden does, but um, I would say maybe 30% is skill and 70% is weather because you just can't fight the weather. There's things you can do to try to like mitigate the wet risks of inclement weather, but there's some things you just can't do anything about. So this was a good year. Weather-wise for the garden, this was a phenomenal year. Gonna have some happy livestock today. All right, okay, we'll leave those ones back there even though they're pretty solidly hit by the squash. Or not by the squash, by the frost. Um, they still have a little bit of life left in them. The temperature is pretty well perfect right now. It is just so beautiful. I just ripped all that stuff out and hardly broke a sweat, which is great because it has been a mighty hot summer. So we're gonna head down to the high tunnel and pick some tomatoes and maybe some peppers. We'll see. I'm planning on making a minestrone soup, like a vegetarian. Well, it won't be vegetarian because it may use beef, beef broth, but um, it won't have any meat in it. So probably add some peppers. It's toasty warm in here though. Okay, let's get rid of these gloves and find. I did a thorough picking of the tomatoes last night and put those into the roaster oven to make some more of that chili base that I made the other day. But I'm sure I'll be able to find some ripe ones in here that we can use for our soup. Oh, they're so beautiful. My goodness. You know what's one thing that nobody will ever be able to convince me of, although people tell me this all the time, is that once the tomatoes have developed a blush, that you can bring them inside and ripen them on your counter and they will taste the same as they will ripened on the vine. And my friends, I just don't buy it. At least that's never been my experience. A vine ripened tomato picked in the afternoon after it's had a chance to warm up, especially if you haven't watered for a few days so the flavors are kind of concentrated in the tomato. There is just nothing like it in the world and no counter ripened tomato is going to be able to compete with it but it certainly can be done it is a good idea if you live in a place where you have a lot of bug pressure or you're going to get a lot of rain and potentially have cracking in your tomatoes to pull them off the vine before they are all the way ripened um, and i've been doing that uh, just just for convenience sake just so i don't have to come down and pick every day um, and then just leave them on the counter and pop them in the roaster oven to cook down when they're ripe. But it's definitely my preference to let them ripen on the vine. I think we'll probably need, uh, I think we'll probably need this filled up to make enough of the stock for this. These little tiny sun gold tomatoes are tomato perfection. They are so good. Okay, let's pick some peppers. I cannot wait to do the big harvest on these peppers. It's gonna be fun because there are lots in here. It is warm in here though, my goodness. That should do us for peppers. Those are pretty big, so probably just a couple more will do us. All right, so that should do it. I'll come down and grab those once we're done harvesting everything else. 
because I want to carry my tea with me. It's much cooler out here, thank goodness. You know, I just decided walking past this gorgeous kale that I'm going to add a few kale leaves chopped up to this soup. Look at that, gorgeous. We'll grab an onion or two from here. There we go. Okay, friends, let's get in here and pick some beautiful carrots for our soup. We need six of them. Okay, there we go. Carrots, some gorgeous celery, which I really need to get here and harvest. Maybe that will be one of our next big ones we do in a few days. So with celery, you can start harvesting them as soon as they're big enough and you can just pull off the outside um, stalks and then it'll just keep growing. And I have actually cut them off right to the ground before and had them um, start growing a new head. So if you have a long enough growing season, you can probably get away with that. Oh, that's, that's definitely enough. So we need a squash and I'm gonna go over and grab one of these mystery squashes I have in my garden over here. That looked like they were fairly close to being mature. I do have a bunch of sugar pumpkins up at the house that I could grab too, but I just really wanna cut into one of these squash over here and see what it is. Okay, aha, there's one right there. So it almost looks like a type of Hubbard squash. So this is the reason why if you are harvesting them to put into storage, you want to cut them off down here instead of breaking them off like I just did. I'm going to be eating this one right away. But because this allows for rot to start um, in your squash. Okay, I'm also going to need some kidney beans for this just because I really like kidney beans in my minstroni soup, but that's obviously not going to come from the garden, although it could. I could grow kidney beans in my garden, but they're one of those things that is relatively inexpensive to buy, and I buy in bulk in 25-pound bags, um, and the amount of work it takes to grow them and chuck them and dry them and all that kind of stuff um, just really isn't worth it, at least for me. So I feel like that, along with our tomatoes and our peppers, should be good. I personally wouldn't mind throwing a couple beets in there if it were just me eating it because I absolutely love beets, but not everyone in my family does. So I'm going to hold off and not put beets in it. I'm also going to throw in some of the green beans that I blanched and froze out of the garden already. Um, I don't have any left in the garden right now to grab them fresh. All right, let's head back up to the house, grab our produce and make some delicious soup. Hello, sweetheart. How are you? Oh, hi, Poppy. <laughs> Down here visiting too, are ya? My cats just love my garden. <laughs> See, off they go. We're gonna go hunt. Bye, guys. All right, friends, we're inside with all of our beautiful produce. I'm most excited to cut into this beauty. And I have decided that instead of using beef broth from my pantry, I'm going to use the last of my French onion soup that I canned up last year. I'm gonna be making a ton again because this is one of my favorite things to <clears throat> start soups with, make gravies with. It's absolutely fantastic and it is made with beef broth. So we're gonna dump those two quarts into our big gigantic stock pot over here. I have veggies in the sink over there that I need to get washed up. But because I'm kind of like a kid when it comes to garden produce, I'm gonna cut into this one first. And that's gonna be hard to cut into, of course. Oh my goodness. Look at that beautiful squash. Oh my gosh, I love it. Scoop out the inside. If I remember, and I'm reminding myself now when I'm editing this video, to look up and see what kind of squash this is. If any of you know, let me know. Although hopefully I'll have it on the screen right about now. 
So all my seeds, I'm not a big fan of pumpkin seeds or squash seeds roasted, just not. So these all go to my chickens too. My chickens eat very, very well this time of year. And I have heard, although I do not know if this is true or not, that feeding pumpkin seeds to livestock can help combat worms in their digest digestive tract. Either way though, I do know they love them. So I'm gonna chop all these up and then just cut them into cubes to throw into our soup. This will be one of the soups that are in my cookbook. Although as with all recipes, it's totally modifiable. And as you'll see, compared to the um, recipe in the cookbook, I'm just putting in what I have actually available in my garden, which is generally how I cook. But I'm hoping a lot of the recipes in the cookbook can be an inspiration for you in your own kitchen. Okay, now I'm just gonna wash up these veggies here. Our celery, I've just scrubbed up my carrots here. I'm not gonna bother peeling them. I'm gonna hold off adding those onions that we picked and I'll make the soup up and then just decide if I wanna add extra onion because there's a lot of onions in the French onion soup that I'm gonna be adding already and I didn't think of that until I went down to the pantry and saw those jars sitting on my shelves. All the chopping <clears throat> for this soup is pretty just rustic chopping. So you can cut everything up whatever size you like for it. And don't hesitate to throw your celery tops in with your soup as well. I'm not gonna put a ton in, but a few. Add some more nice celery flavor. And you know what else I forgot to get down in the garden is some fresh basil and parsley. We definitely want fresh basil and parsley for this soup, for sure. And I don't know why I chopped these celery so big because <clears throat> my family actually prefers celery chopped smaller than this. Rough chop there and into the pot. A good amount of olive oil in the bottom of that pot, like a quarter cup or so at least. So we need to wash these ones too. Look at that beautiful tomato. This one's a black crim. One of my favorites this year. So I'm just going to chop these up, kind of like a diced tomato. And this soup will cook down for a couple of hours. It's even better if you can make it the day before. You wanna eat it or slow cook it all night. Into the pot. Look at that. How beautiful is that? Oh, it smells so good too. And into the pot. You can totally use um, canned tomatoes. That's what I do in the winter time. But I have all these gorgeous fresh ones right here. So how beautiful is that? Okay, let's put our French onion soup in there. Okay, so I'm not gonna bother taking out the stock on these. I'm just gonna chop it fairly finely because this is gonna cook for a few hours, so that'll be enough time to soften it up. I have the kale chopped up and in there, the carrots chopped up and in there. I have a couple more tomatoes to add. I just held them back because I wasn't sure that I would need them, but I think I can put them in. I'm not gonna add this pepper because those were gigantic peppers that I put in there. And then, all I need to do is cook up some kidney beans, grab the basil and the parsley from down in the garden and add those. And then I'm just gonna let this simmer for the next couple of hours. So I'll be back with you to show you it when it's all done. All right, friends, it has been a couple of hours and I have some parsley and basil here all chopped up. I'm gonna add to the soup. I've already added some, whoops, <laughs> added some kidney beans to it and it tastes so good. I can't wait to show you. Dan just came back from the post office and I want to show you what he brought me. Look at these, friends. These are crocheted bunting flags. Look at how beautiful they are. So these were made by Angelica. Angelica, thank you so much. I am so deeply honored that 
anything I could ever share on this platform that would, would help in any type of way during such a tragic time in your life. Um, and all of our love goes out to you. So thank you. I will cherish these always. Um, some of my kids wanted to have some pasta with their men minstroni, so I made some rotini pastas just sitting in the colander over there. And I don't like adding my any kind of pasta to soup, to soup, especially if I've made a large enough batch to last for another day for leftovers, just because I find the noodles get just really gross when they've been sitting in the soup for so long. So I just put the soup in the bowl and then, or sorry, the noodles in the bowl and then the soup on top. So let me show you what this looks like. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? It smells so good. This has got to be one of my favorite all time soups. It is so delicious and really easy to make just a bunch of chopping, but this doesn't have any, um, any salt in it. Even there's so much flavor from all of those veggies that I just added a little bit of pepper just cause I like the flavor of pepper. Oh, I didn't add the green beans, by the way, either. I just forgot to add them and it tastes so good as is. So I just decided not to. Mm. Oh my gosh, that is so good. I don't think that this recipe is linked over on my blog yet, but I'll try to get that up for you in the next week or two. I hope that you enjoyed this video, everyone, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye.